On this week's Practical Pro Musician, is there a right way and a wrong way to network or should you even network? Well, the answer is yes, you should be networking, but you're probably thinking about it the wrong way, or at least I used to. What do I mean by all this? Is this confusing? Is this making any sense? I don't know. Stay tuned. Let's talk about it. We love playing music, but it seems like the odds of making a living as a professional musician are about as high as winning the lottery. So the big question is this. How do musicians like us, with jobs, families, and responsibilities, get from where we are today to making a practical living playing music we love? Well, my name is Daniel Hathaway, and this show will give you the answers. This is The Practical Pro Musician. Hey, hey, hey there, my friend. How are you? It's the Practical Pro Musician, just like my own voice just said in the intro. (laughs) But it's me, Daniel. I'm so happy that you've joined me once again. It is a, as I'm recording this, it's a very kind of dreary day outside. I'm looking out the window of the the, the rental house we live in right now, um, which as the leaves have kind of fallen off, uh, I'm recording this in the fall, November, um, as the leaves have kind of fallen off all of the trees, the window I'm looking out looks right out to kind of a country winding road. Um, it's a very beautiful road to drive on, but I'm, I'm watching the cars drive by. It's all rainy. It's kind of cloudy, um, a little chilly outside, but I've got a cup of warm coffee here with me. Um, and that is the best part of a cold jury day other than like sleeping in or like just napping all day, <laughs> which I can't really do right now. Now, other than those things, I think a warm cup of coffee on a cold, dreary day is pretty much the best thing you can have. But hey, there's also all kinds of fun things going on in my life. I hope there's fun things going on for you as well. Um, I, uh, you know, I guess I haven't, I, I've tried to avoid talking about it so much because I talked about it for so long, but we're still building a house, which is again, why we're in this rental house um, currently. Um, and uh, it's, it's coming along nicely. We're about six weeks out from, I think, being able to move into that new house. And so it's, it's tough. I don't know if I've mentioned, but the place we're building our house is really close to where both we, we used to own a house and, and then the house that we're renting, uh, they're all very close to each other. And it is so hard to, uh, to avoid dropping by the new house all the time to check in. And honestly, you know what? There's no shame in it. I don't feel bad anymore about doing it. It's my house. I'll check in and know as much as I want because you always catch mistakes and things that the builders are making and you can have them fixed before they could become a big problem. So anyway, that's exciting for me. And then, uh, I'm recording this on a Friday. I'm actually recording this. Um, I think it'll be out the same day that I'm recording this. I'm recording this on Friday, November 22nd. Um, and last night, as you may know, if you followed along with me for a long time, um, I'm a huge fan of the car company, Tesla. Um, we own a model S in our family. Um, and it's so funny that we, uh, we're looking at buying a second one for my wife, potentially a model X, which is an SUV. And, uh, and then last night, um, as I'm recording this, they announced their pickup truck, which is called the cyber truck. This is, has nothing to do with music, by the way. I just am letting you know what's going on in my life. So you can like skip all this if you, you know, just keep skipping ahead if you don't, you don't care about this. Uh, but anyway, they announced a new pickup truck that is, um, very polarizing in the way it looks. Um, I'm not scared to say it's astonishingly ugly. Um, but that's exactly what I wanted before we watched like the, my wife and I watched the live broadcast of them announcing it. I said to her, I really hope it's like just obscenely ugly, um, and offensive looking. Cause that's what I want in a pickup truck. I want something that's just like unapologetically ugly. And that's what it was. And so I reserved it last night. Um, of course it'll won't be here for like another couple of years, but we reserved one. And what's funny about it is the website was messing up. It made me think that my reservation wasn't going through my payment for reservation wasn't going through. So I kept retrying and retrying. And this morning I woke up to, uh, six emails and six reservations and six charges for, six trucks. So I got to go through and cancel all those. Anyway, lots of fun stuff going on in my life. Um, 
but I actually, uh, the other thing that's going on in my life, and I talk about this a lot, and I promise you it's not to promote it. Uh, it kind of is maybe, but it also is in the forefront of my mind is um, I have this membership site, uh, promusician.org which is where you can find all the back uh, episodes of this podcast. Uh, but also it's a membership site. There's a, there's a separate area where uh, weekly we have new content, new support for people who are trying to become pro musicians. Um, and this week uh, I'm working on the content, some content for the mus- the, uh, the membership site. And it's a video uh, interview I did with a friend of mine who's a, who's a, a tech, a guitar tech for a really famous band. And his story of how he um, got that gig is really crazy. And I'm not going to like share the whole story with you or go back through it all. Actually, I will share a clip of it um, in an upcoming episode. But the reason I'm sharing it is because the, the way that he got this gig was purely through networking and what I consider networking, which is very different than I think what most of us probably think of, or at least what I used to think of. Um, when I thought of networking and I think a lot of people, when um, they hear musicians say, you got to network, you got to, you got to get out there and get to know people. I think they, I think most of us, when, at least when I I know that before I really got into the music business, what I thought of when I heard that was um, like going to like open mic nights and stuff, which isn't a bad idea, but just going out there and like uh, targeting certain people that you wanted to know. And then like, choosing how to like promote yourself in like everyday conversation, kind of like this dishonest version of socializing where like your real motivation behind it all is not to get to know the person, uh, but to try to get something from them. And, uh, that is not what this person did. And that's not what I mean when I talk about networking. And I actually don't think that's what most professional musicians who give this advice, I don't think that's what they mean either. Um, what I think they are talking about and what I am talking about is something else. What it is, is, um, is just getting to know people, uh, in, and developing friendships, real friendships around things that you enjoy or you care about. Um, and, and things you care about that are not your career because, uh, people only care about your career if they're friends with you first. Um, and so I see so many people, I've met so many people living in Nashville. Um, especially when I was, uh, I was playing drums all the time at a church, um, here in town that a lot of, um, a lot of artists, a lot of fairly well-known Christian music artists went to this church as well. And, uh, it, and some of them would come on stage with us and, and lead music on Sunday mornings with us sometimes in the band. And somehow people started showing up that just wanted to get to know those people. They thought that like by being in the band at church, they could get gigs touring. Um, and so my radar for like people who had the wrong motivations for what they were doing got really sensitive. Um, and the thing is that most successful musicians have that same kind of radar developed because they get approached all the time. Um, but I will tell you this, I've never turned down someone's, by the way, I'm going to say this and there's going to be a few of you who listen, who are listening, who are are buddies of mine who don't live around Nashville, who said, I tried to have coffee with you. And you said no, because of other things I will say this. I've never turned down someone asking me for to go for a cup of coffee and because they just wanted to hear my perspective on something or they would, they like to learn something. So, and I would tell you that any other musician that I've ever asked for coffee to sit down and have a cup of coffee with me, they have never turned me down for that either. Uh, because most people do not ask for that. Most people ask me for, um, they ask me for a favor or a gig or a recommendation or trying to get them a connection with so-and-so. And so that's not the kind of networking that I want to enable. And that's not the kind of networking that I believe would work anyway, but I really don't like it. Um, and most other professional musicians don't like it either. So what you should do instead is develop real friendships with people that you happen to share a common interest with. Networking does not always have to be with someone who has already made it and you want something from them. The most important networking that you're ever going to do is going to be with people who are right exactly at the same point in their career that you are in yours and getting to know them and supporting them as much as you would hope they would support you is going to be the most effective thing you could ever do uh, for your career. Incidentally, doing that is exactly how you also can just be a good friend to other people. Um, That's the craziest thing is there's no secret to quote unquote how to network. How to network is you be a decent person and you, you help other people and you serve and love other people. It's not rocket science. It's really not that hard. You just got to help people out. 
And there's a lot of different ways to do that. If you follow the path of how can I best serve those around me, um, you are going to, and also of course you, you practice your instrument and you actually like, you know, develop your craft and work hard at being the best musician you can be. If you do those two things, the gigs are going to come your way. But most people don't do those two things. They focus on how can I advance my career via this relationship or via this person. That's not the way to do things. You're going to make more enemies and more people not like you than you will friends. So you need to look at what genuine relation, genuine relationships you can develop. And you have to always constantly second guess yourself. I still do this because I know some people who have given me opportunities. And before they've given me opportunities, I constantly have to say to my, ask myself, Daniel, are you friends with this person? Cause you like hanging out with them and you're, tr- you're trying to help them or you, or you want to learn from them or are you trying, are you are you trying to be a friend with this person because they can get you something. And I honestly can't maintain if it's the latter, if it's me trying to get something from somebody, I can't maintain that relationship long enough. Anyway, I don't have the energy to, to fake liking somebody long enough to get something from them anyway. Um, but I have to always ask myself that. And I think you probably will too. Um, but just focus on helping other people serve those around you and be a great musician and the best musician you can be. And the gigs will come, but that's how you network the right way. It's just getting to know as many people and helping as many people as possible. It's not some method. It's not some tactic you do. It's not manipulation of other people. You're not being a salesperson. You are just helping other people. And that is the way to network in my opinion. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, and like I said, I will, I will share a clip of this, of uh, this interview down the road. I'm kind of waiting to share some clips of these interviews until, um, I'm ready to open up, uh, admission into this membership again. Um, cause it's not kind of fair to kind of promote what you could be getting inside of this membership, um, any more than I already do, uh, without you actually being able to access it. So I'm kind of holding off on that until that comes around, but I'm guessing, um, if you're listening to this in real time, uh, in late 2019, I'm going to guess early in uh, early in 2020, probably around January, February, March at the latest, um, will be when this opens up for the first time and you'll get access, you'll be able to access this if you'd like to. Um, but until then, I'm so happy that you're joining me again here on the practical pro musician. My name's Daniel and we will talk again. I think next week, if I can get one recorded before the Thanksgiving holiday, I will do it and I will have it scheduled for release on a Friday or Thursday, um, this next week. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later. Bye for now.